Boom! The Anatomy of an Opening. A series where I break down the opening page, page and a half, I guess, sentence by sentence to really show you guys what makes it work. Today's subject is the opening page of The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. 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 Excuse the allergies. Allergies can't stop me from making videos. <gasps> Oh. In this piece, I want to do a bit of a deep dive on the prose and general writing style of Patrick Rothfuss. Known for his thoughtful and poetic words, Rothfuss is perfect for this kind of thing. This is going to be all about the words, so get ready. But before we get too far, don't forget, if you're enjoying this video, hit that like and subscribe button on the channel because it super duper 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 helps me out. Anyway, back to the video. Opening the book, we flip to page one, the prologue, a silence of three parts. It was night again. The Waystone Inn lay in silence, and it was a silence of three parts. Rothfuss is often considered to have rather flowery prose. It seems well liked by most readers, but I want to acknowledge that it's not so simple as it seems. Yes, his vocabulary is rather well pruned, and he gives a great deal of time to making sure that the sentences read with a song-like cadence. But a simple place that he often starts is just creativity. Not with the words, but with the concept. Just thinking outside of the box. More on that in a moment. Going forward, the most obvious part was a hollow, echoing quiet made by things that were lacking. If there had been a wind, it would have sighed through the trees, set the inn sign creaking on its hooks, and brushed the silence down the road like trailing autumn leaves. While this opening probably took some time and many tries for Rothfuss to get right, it's surprisingly simple. It's not the words on the page that are actually brilliant, it's the concept itself. The idea of a silence of three parts is the catalyst for this entire page. This page is an exercise on the absence of silence, which makes for some unique ways of getting around the words. Rothfuss lets the concept do the talking. The next part reads, If there had been a crowd, even a handful of men inside the inn, they would have filled the silence with conversation and laughter, the clatter and clamor one expects from a drinking house during the dark hours of night. If there had been music, but no... Of course, there was no music. In fact, there were none of these things. And so the silence remained. While this passage continues the theme beautifully, it becomes especially masterful when you take into account the information that it effortlessly slips into the background that explain the scene. We've established that this is an inn, but something doesn't quite feel right. There's no one really here. No music, only the deafening quiet. The next paragraph reads, Inside the waystone, a pair of men huddled at one corner of the bar. They drank with quiet determination, avoiding serious discussions of troubling news. In doing this, they added a small, sullen silence to the larger, hollow one. It made an alloy of sorts. A counterpoint. Here, Rothfuss is just playing with the concept. There's not a crowd, but there is a pair of men. And while we've just been establishing the overwhelming silence, there is a little bit of friction at this inn. Yet, it's still a silence. And it's with his trademark gorgeous words that his creativity shines through. The silence of three parts is a playground for Rothfuss, painting a silence within a silence within a silence, even drawing a comparing line to the inner workings of metal. The next paragraph reads, The third silence was not an easy thing to notice. If you listened for an hour, you might begin to feel it in the wooden floor underfoot and in the rough, splintering barrels behind the bar. It was in the weight of the black stone hearth that held the heat of a long dead fire. It was in the slow back and forth of a white linen cloth rubbing along the grain of the bar. And it was in the hands of the man who stood there, polishing a stretch of mahogany that already gleamed in the lamplight. Rothfuss makes this paragraph dramatic, building and building tension, but shows his control of the reader by anticlimactically softening just at the peak, leaving us wondering, What's so ominous about a man polishing a counter? The next section. The man had true red hair, red as flame. His eyes were dark and distant, and he moved with the subtle certainty that comes from knowing many things. At this point, you're on the edge of your seat as this dark in and ominous man are alluding to so much more than meets the eye. The next passage. The waystone was his, just as the third silence was his. This was appropriate, as it was the greatest silence of the three, wrapping the others inside itself. It was deep and wide as autumn's ending, 
It was heavy as a great river smooth stone. It was the patient, cut flower sound of a man who is waiting to die. It's with this final bit that the nail is driven home. Closing the page with the slightest resolve, but refusing to give the reader any real satisfaction. Picking up the anticlimactic references of a few sentences earlier, and driving it through the heart with the last line, the sound of a man waiting to die. This prologue is incredibly simple, yet beautifully woven, and that's a major takeaway. You should often avoid trying to do too many things with an opening, but focus on doing one exceptionally well. It's a common sentiment, but no less important. I love being a low-budget YouTuber that uses natural window lighting and has to deal with the sun fading behind the clouds, then reappearing, then fading, then reappearing as the video grows lighter and darker as I speak. I've said this before, but here the focus is all mystery. It's a tried and true objective, but the way that Rothfuss makes it his own here is by thinking outside the box. It wasn't just that he spent hours poring over every word. It's that he found a simple, out-of-the-box concept, that being the breakdown of a three-part silence, and he ran with it. The concept of a silence of three parts is not a stroke of genius, but it is calculated. It's methodical, and Rothfuss uses his prowess with words to take it to new heights. And what this prologue does to the reader is the most important takeaway. It begs a question. Not too many questions, nothing so confusing or convoluted. Only one question, but so well constructed that it leaves the reader yearning to know the answer. Who is this red-haired man, and why is he waiting to die? Rothfuss uses a typical, ordinary scene, where you'd expect to just find an old inn, with a few patrons and an innkeeper, but instead, with careful words, he makes it gripping, inserting suspense and a looming feeling that something isn't right. This prologue is masterful, subtle, and wastes no words. A carefully concocted addictive substance that will pull you along into the first chapter with eagerness. That's all. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy content like this, hit the like and subscribe button on the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.